I want to know, are you excited about Kamala Harris running for president? Yeah, I am. Absolutely. 100%. I am excited. It's amazing. Yeah. What was your favorite accomplishment of hers uh, as VP of the United States? Honestly, I can't answer that question. You know, honestly, that's a good question. I can't really say um, specifically. I can't, you know, I'm humble here. I can't think of anything, you know, specifically. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. I haven't really been following politics. And this is not an isolated case. There are a lot of Harris supporters that have no idea what the VP has done in office. Many of them can't even name a single accomplishment that she's had within the four years that she's been in office. The only conclusion here is because Kamala Harris hasn't had an accomplishment worth talking about within her entire term. And yet we see all this excitement toward her running for president. However, not all liberals are out on the streets celebrating. Bill Mayer, who himself is a liberal, is now starting to ask questions. Questions that are perfectly valid given the expectations of Vice President Kamala Harris. I want you guys to check out this exchange with CNN's Caitlin Collins. And guys, before we get started, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for hitting the like button, subscribing, and for sharing this video on Facebook and Twitter. What do you think about the fact that Kamala doesn't talk to the press? It, in a way, I feel like it's more insulting to help pre than what Trump does. Now, Trump says you're the enemy of the people, which is pretty bad. But she's kind of saying is, I don't need you. I'm not, a, I'm not talking to you. You don't matter. You're not relevant anymore. To me, that's even worse than I hate you. It's like I don't think about you. I don't know if it's worse than denigrating the press on a daily basis, which is what Donald Trump did. I mean, I was I covered him in the White House every day as a, as a correspondent. And, you know, oftentimes to, to kind of, you know, shake you if you were asking him a question, he would try to get into a personal argument with you or just deny or, or lie about you know what you were asking about. And so I don't I don't know if I would compare the two. Now, guys, before we dive into her answer here, there's something I want to address. The difference between Donald Trump and many other politicians is that he's frank. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind so long as he believes he has a point. And this man has been attacked by the media throughout his entire term. If anything, he's the one that's been criticized harshly by mainstream media. Which brings us to CNN. The news outlet isn't exactly unbiased with its reporting. With Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket, the presidential race has reset. But how much has it reset in terms of the gender gap among voters? That is what our Harry Anton has been looking at for you this morning. And he is here with us now. So set the scene. How are men and women responding to Harris? What's the big reason why Harris is gaining in the polls? Yeah, all right. It's the gender gap. It's something we've spoken about in politics for a long period of time. And we're really seeing it here. All right, let's take a look at the national polls first. This is Democrat versus Trump margin. And I want to point out this is average across the same pollsters. Look at Biden versus Trump, women and men. What we see is the gender gap is working in Donald Trump's advantage. He holds a nine point advantage among men against Joe Biden. And Joe Biden only held a full four point advantage among women. But take a look now. Look at how the race has changed. Instead of having a four point advantage among women as Biden did, look at Harris's advantage. It leaps up to 11 points. In fact, men haven't changed their voting patterns at all, at least in the national polls. A nine point advantage for Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, a nine point advantage against Kamala Harris. What has occurred is women voters are flocking to the Democratic ticket. Look at that. Look at that. Four points versus 11 points. That is the reason that Kamala Harris has turned this race you, around. You, Many claim that they've now stooped to a new level where they can be considered the mouthpiece of the Harris presidential campaign. And what's worrying for Democrats is that even Bill Mayer is starting to ask, why won't she face the media? Why doesn't she want to answer questions? You also can't forget that Caitlin Collins and her point of view depends on who's signing her checks. She used to be way more conservative, but switched things up after getting into CNN. Okay, so George Soros is this foreign-born left-wing guy who essentially wants to change the nature of our country. And in this data dump, one of the memos was about the refugee crisis. And they made three points. They think that they've been successful at influencing immigration policy across the world. They think that the refugee crisis is an opportunity to continue doing so. And they think the refugee crisis is the new normal. And George Soros is this guy who is a staunch advocate for open borders. He wants people to be able to go wherever they want, whenever they want, for whatever reason. And for him, he sees this immigration policy, this crisis, as a vehicle to further his immigration agenda. But of course, this is old news, right? Collins is now focused on being a part of liberal media. All of this George Soros talk probably isn't even allowed to be discussed inside their offices. And yet, 
CNN wants us to believe that they're moderate. Ain't nobody buying that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and this is a place to get unbiased reporting. Psych. Although even their own audience doesn't believe that. I know you guys are objective over there that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> Oh, I know. CNN makes a... And I know is that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. And as embarrassing as that was, it was an indication that even the people who watch them know what's up. Because it's downright hilarious to believe that CNN is a place where both liberals and conservatives meet eye to eye. That almost felt like a punchline as I said it. And I want to go back to Bill Mayer here because Collins tries to explain their stand on this issue. But again, the crowd reacts to the truth when it's being told. You made press because you were on Stephen Colbert's show, and he said something like, um, you guys at CNN just report the news straight, and the crowd burst into laughter. That tells you a lot, doesn't it? I mean, how, how do you guys think you are doing is in that arena of like, this is a terribly divided country. We're not only politicized, a lot of people just hate the other side. And CNN, in my view, should be the place where both sides can watch. How do you think you're doing with that? How is CNN, CNN is the place where both sides can watch. And, and I think, you know, my show is evidence of that. We have lawmakers on from both parties. We'll have Elizabeth Warren on one, one night. We'll have Ted Cruz on uh, another night. I think lawmakers from both parties yeah. should take questions and but, you should push both of them. But but on the on CNN being a place of credibility, I mean, look at what just happened in Chicago. We had 300 people from CNN on the ground covering that convention. There were f several reporters from just our team alone on the floor, uh, bringing it in real time to people. And I think CNN puts resources behind things and just brings a level uh, of news that you don't get anywhere else. And, and I think CNN does. Yeah, a but great I'm, job I'm talking that. about the people on CNN and what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks, and I don't blame them. I watched Kamala's speech last night. It ended at 8.09, well, I guess 11.09 in the East. It wasn't until 11.23 till the, conserv the one conservative guy, what's his name? Scott Jennings. This lonely Scott, I call him. David Urban was there too. Wait a second, wait a second. I watched from 8.09 to 8.23, they were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. But if I'm a conservative in America and I'm watching CNN just for the straight middle of the road, that's what I hear for 15 minutes is it's great. And then Lonely Scott. <laughs> it does look, I mean, and when you see the pat, it does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as The View. It's like it's almost better to have nobody there like MSNBC. And this is what they don't see because it looks like they believe their own bull. They believe that they're calling it straight down the middle. And sure, they can have both Democrats and Republicans on their shows, but it doesn't mean that their anchors will treat them the same way. And it will almost always lead them to banking on one side more than the other. And I think that's what Mayer is trying to point out here. Journalism is now being used as a tool to lift one side of America over the other. And it's not like any of these other news outlets will do the opposite, but it's something to be upfront about. That and the fact that positive messaging is used for something or someone that might not deserve it at all. It's highly plausible that Vice President Kamala Harris won't hold an interview at all with any of these networks because they're already carrying the water for her. What's the point of facing the press when they're already over the moon when it comes to Harris? The exact opposite is seen for Donald Trump. Now guys, I did a previous video that shows just how differently the former president is questioned by journalists. Make sure you guys watch that video out right after this one because it is shocking to see just how quick Trump is thinking on his feet. As always guys, Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for keeping yourselves informed here day in and day out. Also, thank you for hitting the like button, sharing these videos and subscribing. I'll see you on the next one.